And now more from the USCAAC National Championships, September 2022. Jeff Sue is again your tournament director. Last year, he ran this tournament and won it. This year, though, he doesn't have his wife Eileen to help him run the tournament, so let's see how his play goes. He has a unique ability to play and direct at the same time. We are now the official YouTube channel of the United States Croquet Association, which is our major sponsor as well. You can check out the website and the other contact information for everything you want to know about croquet. I'm very pleased to announce that Chris Barley is on board as a sponsor now as well. He ordinarily would be playing in this tournament, but he's out gallivanting around the UK this week. What you're looking at is the Chesapeake Bay Croquet Club in Hartfield, Virginia. This big patch of grass at the bottom of the screen is the 16 additional courts that will bring the total at Macy's Place to 24 to let them host world championships and expanded nationals, etc. Lyle Browning, a, a club member, is the tournament manager along with the countless volunteers that make all this possible. We're doing the singles knockout. This is the round of 16. Stuart Lawrence and Randy Cardo have a three-game match. Stuart won the first, Randy won the second, and today we're playing the tiebreaker. Stuart Lawrence started playing croquet in 1990, <clears throat> focused on American rules for a long time, and now mostly AC, as great as 2193, and those are the international teams that he's played on. He has a lot of experience, and he knows Wiley like the back of his hand. Randy Cardo, at 2034, joined in 2013 and has won a singles national championship and two doubles national championships. His focus on AC is more recent. That's the numbering on the courts, in case you wondered. We'll be playing on court eight for the tiebreaker. The right to choose ball color or choice of lead alternates in a multiple game match. American rules, you know, there's a time limit. I can... Coming into view on the left of your screen is, is Macy White, the guy that owns and here. developed this magnificent yeah. complex. And even though he has a tournament director and a tournament manager, I can't imagine that playing at home isn't a little more complicated for him because he runs this place. That microphone's a shotgun mic, so it, it, it drowns a lot. Hopefully six inches outside corner two. Yeah. yeah. What's your name? John. John? John Green. Nice to meet you, John. If you're going to miss, it's better to leave the opponent with three balls in one group and one far away rather than pairs of two balls separated. It's easier to build a break if you have two pairs. So in this configuration, Stewart's choices are to rush one opponent ball to the other, place them at hoops one and two, and come back to partner on the east boundary. Or... He can make hoop one off partner, and then with his balls at hoops one and two, it's easier to set an aggressive lead and get a break going subsequently. Most of you already know this, but this is the correct way to get this rush. You kick black back into the yard line area, and that gets it out of the way. <clears throat> and now he has a clean shot on red to hoop one. There's some fabulous croquet in this game. But some of it looks a little more familiar to you and me. 
which is why it takes so long and maybe shows us more about how to recover from mishaps than one of Matthew's perfect games. Randy's up in corner two getting ready to shoot. All the scoreboard is going to show in AC, of course, is clip position. Stuart Lawrence is an uncommonly good shot, as will be demonstrated again later. Mm. 
Much later, actually. We'll put up the scoreboard at the end of every turn where the clip positions change or if there are decisions to be made. That is spectacular. <laughs> the risk-benefit ratio is awful high, but it was spectacular for sure. And that was unfortunate. Not a risk he wants to take with opponent ball sitting right there. I don't know about you, but with breakdowns at hoops one, two, and three in the first 20 minutes, this game's looking more familiar to me. And there's more of that to come.
Fair enough. This game took three hours, so to make it watchable, I had to edit out Stewart's textbook break to one back, where it gets interesting again. His yellow clip on hoop two brings to mind references to popping partner through hoop one and then doing a new standard leave, leaving the ball the opponent does not want to play on hoop two. It makes the rush of the ball from three back maybe a little easier. And it may force opponent to play the ball they don't want to play. Samir Patel, though, in his chapter on pop tactics in Beyond Expert Croquet, is completely dismissive of ever popping partner. Pop means peel on opponent other than in a TPO and is used for tactical reasons. In this situation, Randy wants to play black so that he can run the triple with blue and have 12 hoops to get it done. But the diagonal spread Stewart is setting up doesn't really force him to play with one ball or the other. And now, of course, with blue is the pioneer at three back, that means he's going to put black on the peg, and he has three opportunities to optimize this position there. There's number one. The croquet grading site lists Stewart as having done 278 triples. So he's <laughs> he's probably done this diagonal spread leave four or five times more than that. Since yellow is for hoop two, he has to do more of a horizontal spread so that black is rushable to hoop two. There is such a thing as a reverse diagonal spread, and it depends on which hoop you're going for. And it really is a function of where the pioneer for your next hoop needs to be placed. So the standard diagonal spread is good for hoops one and two, a reverse for three and four, etc. Check out Clark Croquet. Chris Clark has an exhausted discussion about that.
And now the final adjustment to make sure blue and black can't hit each other. And that black doesn't have a backswing to shoot it red and yellow. That was a classically performed diagonal spread. If you're trying to learn, you would do well to watch that a couple times. You can't take practice shots, but you can certainly take practice swings. The horizontal orientation of this spread does shorten this shot by a couple of yards. So it's a delayed triple unless Stewart decides to go after black after hoop two. And that's not going to happen unless he can maneuver to get a pioneer at three. dual-purpose placement of red, he can pick it up after he makes two. Or if he doesn't make two, he can go set up behind it and lay a trap in corner two.
placing red where he can pick it up after he makes hoop four. Is he going to try for the cannon? Yes. No. <laughs> Let's see. A super worm here would put black by hoop four and give him a rush on blue to hoop three. But he doesn't have the cannon, so he's going to have to do it in stages. Once again, the long, accurate rush is the most important stroke in croquet. He's kicking blue out a little bit in a better escape ball position while he goes after black with yellow. We should start a pool right now, but what if he gets the four back peel? After five, before six, after six, before one back, after one back, etc. Place your bets, folks. What a shot. Peels it now, it's after four.
So now blue becomes the hoop six pioneer. He really needs a rush on black out of five. Let's see if he gets it. Not only did he not get the rush, he flirts with disaster on this shot. In this situation, the Wiley method suggests you put black down by the north boundary so you can pick it up after six. Patty Chapman and Beyond Expert Croquet in his chapter on Triple Peel suggests that this is a better position for black. It has more versatility. He's rotating the striker ball, so he puts a node not milling on the yellow ball against red. That way there's less draw on this peel because he's going to hit a little bit of a split shot. He's going to check out where he wants to put blue so that he has room to send it to two back at the same time that he gets a rush on the P. Lee and four back. There's usually seven shots between hoops and appealing turn. He's going to do the rush peel with his third shot. So this is after six, not before one back. Everybody who put their money on after six, go collect at the window. <coughs> Thank you. 
And he's happy to plan for the penalt peel probably after three back. He's got a great rush on black to go pick up red, but I wonder if he wouldn't have been better off hitting it shorter, sending black closer to three back and using blue to pick up red. King three. Okay. He's running. He's running yellow. Reds made it through four back. He peeled the four back. Okay. So he's got two peels to go, and he just made two back. Yeah. Okay. And Randy's for one and three. Yes. Okay. Got it. Thanks, Brian. Do you know anything about Michael and Talis? Okay. Got it. Thank you. You may recall in the previous game, Kyle Maluth in this shot put blue in pioneer position at four back. Stewart's putting it in escape ball position at Penault, which makes it easier for him to protect the break after he attempts the Penault peel after three back.
Ugh. No, it's a straight double. But he's still in good control because he has a perfectly placed escape ball in blue. Ah, that was masterful, until it wasn't. I really don't care who wins, but that triple was so beautifully built that I wanted to see it succeed. Now, Randy gets a lift to bonk because Stuart made one back, and even if he'd made four back, it would still be a lift to bonk because it was his second ball around. Randy wants to play black, and black is for hoop three, so it couldn't be better from his point of view. Randy made four, five, and six with no problem, and now he starts to engineer his leave. You can probably guess that he doesn't have a two-back pioneer, but I think this is actually the way people ran breaks in the beginning anyway, was to just go back to the peg every time where balls were paired up. Reds for penal, yellows for four back. Stewart probably wants to play yellow, but I don't think Randy's going to try to force anything.
it occurred to me to think about whether a defensive leave would have made sense here. Stewart's been shooting pretty well. Randy could have put red peg high on the west boundary with blue and black just outside corner two, giving blue a rush on black to hoop one, and yellow the ball Stewart wants to play over here by three bag. That would have made any shot that yellow took dangerous and would have at least had made Stewart think about it. I actually went out on the lawn and did that yesterday. And with a couple of bisques, I got a triple out of it. Again, if you want exhaustive detail, look at Clark Croquet and Chris's discussion of defensive leaves. I'm sure Randy doesn't remember, but in the Selection 8s, the first year he played AC, I used a defensive leave against him. But I got the parity wrong. He had a short shot and he finished off of it. Approaching the wiring line from 90 degrees like this runs the risk of leaving red and yellow easy shots on each other. Bailing out to an old standard leave if that shot's longer than what he just took is not a crazy thing to do. A good diagonal spread is never a bad thing, but a bad one can cause trouble. And the old standard leave just puts the opponent ball out there a few yards south of hoop three and your ball's in corner four with a rush toward that ball. And another nicely done diagonal spread. Going to look at a possible double from the end of A-Bong. This I'm not quite sure about. Stewart's not far enough over to make a double out of that, so he's probably just trying to assure that if he misses, his ball goes in the corner, making it harder for Randy to dig it out. And now our second triple attempt. This, of course, illustrates the versatility of a diagonal spread. You don't care which ball they pick up. You can get going either way. At slightly lower levels, a lot of American players have trouble putting enough roll on a back ball in a shot like this. 
Randy has no such problem, but this time his skill got him in trouble. Yellow goes in contact with red, so he has to guess what direction Randy will come from. I don't know whether he guessed right or wrong. It's whether you give him a bigger target, which is probably irrelevant, or make it harder for him to get a corner cannon. I think he probably guessed right. Preventing the corner cannon. Yellow, yellow person. I think he was right, and if he couldn't tell, and they was basically simultaneous, he gets to choose which one he rotated. There's an interesting cannon he could do here. He could put blue on the yard line right behind yellow and then croquet yellow into red, the west side of red, so the yellow glances off away from corner four. Red probably goes out of bounds. Yellow ends up in the yard line area. Then when you put red back in the cor on the corner spot, blue has a nice rush on red uh, to hoop three and yellows maybe a little further over than he got it there but I think the difference would have been marginal something to keep in mind though
Very similar play to the one Stewart had, leaving a skate ball at four back and go get the two balls on the boundary past hoop four. This shot is dangerous and extremely well done. The grading site gives Randy credit for three triples in the six years he's been playing AC. But here he chose just to run the break. He made four, five, and six without difficulty. And here we pick him up as his second ball goes through one back. And red is a pioneer at two back. Stewart gets a lift, and he wants to play yellow and finish with a straight double. So even though the shot on blue from the end of B-Box is a lot easier, he's got to get red down to penalty before he makes four back mm -hmm. if he's going to finish this turn. So Black has an easy rush into corner three, so Stewart's not about to join up at this point. And notice how he puts it just outside the corner spot so that if Randy makes four back and he gets to lift his other ball, he's got a rush on it. And obviously Randy knows not to make four back with Stewart's other ball anywhere near a bonk. And now Stewart gets a crack at the tea lady. It's 100 feet from that hoop to the corner three corner spots so and maybe add five feet. I'm not quite sure what Randy said, but I'm sure it was more civilized than what I would have said.
Stewart's going to go to Penguin Wren. Decide what leave you would use now. Oh, never mind. He was probably trying to make the same decision, and that's what messed up his shot. He's going to make four back off three, gather yellow, make Penalt off red, and now it's for Rover. And now the same dilemma that Stephen Morgan had in the previous game against Kamala. Red must be wired from yellow by the peg because he's going to take the lift that he gets because Randy made four bang. because he has a good Pioneer at Rover and all he has to do is get Black close to the peg. He doesn't need a rush on Black and he's not about to take the risk of going out on this shot. There's no lift involved in this lead, but he does have to be careful not to wire him.
he walked back down to blue three times to be sure that he put red and yellow where blue could see at least one of them. And now that he's not responsible for blue, he can work out a wiring. crowd is gathering over there. I'm sure I would have been tempted here to try to rush over to Penalt and finish, but Stuart's not about to give Randy a chance to hit in because Randy would rather shoot at the peg ball red. <clears throat> Stuart puts it a long way from the end of B bonk, and if Randy shoots at it from A bonk, he's going to have to shoot hard. And that shot's guarded by yellow in corner two. I think Stuart Lawrence understands this game better than most. And I'm learning a lot just trying to figure out what he just did. This next shot's a little dicey because Blue's tucked in so tight to the hoop. But if he went for Penult and broke down, Blue could come through three back hard and have an 
easy shot on his balls out in the middle of the court. So. Stuart doesn't want to use blue because he doesn't want to be responsible for it, and that will let him set up another wiring. I don't know whether time is a factor here. They probably had seven and a half hours to play three games, but both of the first two games probably went pretty quickly, so I'm guessing they have all the time they want, and they're sure using it. But for that, he probably would have finished on this turn.
and the crowd swells. The model for Rodin's The Thinker, except the elbow's on the wrong knee. My first reaction here was even Stewart's getting tired of setting leaves, but if you think about it, Blue can see red so he can get wired at Rover and probably be safe if he wants to. If you're thinking he could just go peg out yellow and then let red play one ball against blue, blue's not far enough behind for that. Now this is how he goes to marking in red without picking up yellow on the way. I can't get myself to do that because walking is not that much fun. But all the top players do what he just did to maintain the integrity of ball placement.
You're watching a pretty rigorous application of the principles of the three ball end game by Stewart. Pete Trimmer has an exhaustive chapter on this in Beyond Expert Croquet Tactics. It's worth a read. And in that, I think, 32-page chapter on pegged out end games, Trimmer spends a lot of time discussing the effect of wiring the boundary ball versus the ball out on the lawn and the effect that has on the opponent's decision to shoot and what do you even want him to shoot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Since you're still watching, I want to express my appreciation for your dedication. People sometimes wonder whether croquet is a game or a sport. My wife says it's an addiction, and I think she's probably right. So Stuart Lawrence's attention to detail in building breaks, fabulous shooting, including a tea lady, and rigorous approach to the principles of the three ball end game lead to a 26-21 win in the tiebreaker and a 2-1 to -one win in his round of 16 match with Randy Cardinal. Thanks again to the USCA and Chris Barley for their sponsorship. Give us a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. There's more to come from the AC Nationals.